Welcome to getting started with TypeScript. In this one, we're gonna be scratching the surface of what TypeScript is and what it does. In short, it's basically a language that turns into JavaScript. So it's not really a language, but it's a bunch of code that is very, very similar to JavaScript, but it's just a little bit different and different enough that it makes it even more approachable than pure JavaScript, which is really cool. There's also a lot of things in it that help fix our syntax errors that we might make in JavaScript. TypeScript just kind of eliminates those things. But that's not really the reason why you should learn TypeScript. You should learn it because you want to build apps with Angular. Now, Angular uses TypeScript now that compiles all of that app into JavaScript files that make it nice, succinct, and very small file sizes for apps. That is, of course, front-end apps that you can use and write with Angular. So we have to learn at least a little bit about TypeScript to get this thing going. And that's what we're doing in this one. We're learning a little bit about TypeScript so we can eventually build apps with Angular. So if you actually want to know more about TypeScript than, than what we cover here, please let us know in the comments now or at the end of this series so we can see what it is that you guys want to check out with TypeScript in particular outside of the context of Angular. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started with TypeScript, we have to make sure that Node.js is installed on our computer. Yes, you have to make sure that another system is installed to use TypeScript. Now, the reason for this is how TypeScript is actually installed. So if you're familiar with pip or the Python um, package library, so pip install something, um, node package manager or NPM works very, very similar. And NPM is how we install TypeScript. Now there might be other ways to install TypeScript, but I've found that NPM is the fastest way to do that. And to get NPM on your local computer, you download and install node. So after you go through the installation process and download it, you'll see this summary and you'll notice that Node.js was installed and as well as NPM. So NPM is the important part here. To check that Node was installed, you would open up terminal or command prompt and just write Node-V and you, or sorry, lowercase v, and you get the actual version of Node.js that you have, right? So the version is right here. It's so it's saying 6.10.2. I have 6.10.2 installed. Um, and I can also do npm version, and that will give me that as well. In many cases, in many cases, you're gonna wanna actually update npm, because npm uh, is updated more often or more frequently than Node.js is. So to update MT npm, regardless if you just did it or not, you'll do sudo, um, or if you are on Windows, you don't have to do sudo, but uh, everyone else, you will do sudo npm install dash g npm and we'll go ahead and of course write out our our user's password or our super user's password that's what sudo does or sudo as you may have heard um, okay so right now it's updating and installing it and it's finished so i've actually installed node.js and npm on here so we can now go to the next step which is doing all of the dependencies for this particular guide so now we have npm installed. We are going to install some of the, the standard dependencies specifically for this guide, right? So these dependencies, one of them, of course, is being TypeScript. The other ones will will basically kind of explain as we use them. Um, but of course, there's jQuery and then there's also HTTP server. So there's there's definitely other ones that we want, might want to work with. Now to install these, um, it's really simple. You're just going to go ahead and copy and paste those. But what I'm gonna do is actually move into my dev project and I'll just do make dir and I'll say TS setup. So TS as in TypeScript and I'll just say setup like that and we're gonna change into TS setup. Um, now, if I look at where I am, of course, these are folders or directories that I've created. You can do the same if you'd like, um, but I do recommend actually working in one folder specifically for what we're about to do. So let's go ahead and do the installations. First of all, we're gonna install TypeScript um, I actually already have TypeScript installed, but I get this permission denied error. So I'll just do sudo in front of it. 
and then the permission denied error goes away. So depending on what system you're on, you might have to run sudo to install each one of these things, um, as would be evident when you installed um, NPM or when you updated NPM itself. So I'm actually gonna pause it for a moment and just go ahead and install the other ones. Cool, so everything was downloaded um, as you see here, jQuery, TS Loader, and HTTP server. So all that stuff's done. Now we're ready to actually work in TypeScript. So TypeScript, of course, is its own language, so it has um, .ts. Um, so when you use TypeScript files, you'll see .ts instead of like .js or .py, so .ts. Um, so what we're gonna do here is actually open up Sublime Text, and I'm gonna create a new project in here for this particular project, and we're gonna put it in TS Setup. I'm gonna open this up, and then I'll save this project as TS Setup. Dot sublime project, okay. Um, oops, we should probably save it inside of that same folder, not in this other one. So we'll go back into our dev folder, TS setup and TS setup. Okay, there we go. So inside of here, we're gonna make our new file and we're gonna call it, um, well, what do we call it before? We probably called it main.ts. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And we've got main.ts. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste these things in here for now. Um, and then I'm also gonna set up TS config. So I'll go ahead and copy this file here and do TS config.json. We paste that in there. Okay. And then finally, we're gonna run TSC or TSC dash watch. So what we're doing here is we're basically creating our TypeScript file. Then we're adding some configuration to it. So the configuration being as we see something called outdir, and then we have common JS. So let's go ahead and go into our folder again, as we see here. And if I run TSC and press enter, um, it runs something, but what we notice actually in this folder, we now have something called main.js. So this is TypeScript compiling into JavaScript. That's what just happened. Um, so TSC compiles that for us. Um, and this is really, really cool. So as we see, I'll explain this code later, but what we see here is it turned into variable suite class or um, basically a function and it returns a, another function. So when I make something like a basil, basically this basil thing will just only call console log even sweeter. Now we can test this out in actual HTML, which we'll do um, in just a moment, but I also want to install a package for TypeScript. So inside of um, using Sublime Text, notice that this isn't giving me any code highlighting where um, JavaScript is. So if I do Command Shift P and I look for the package installer, so install package control, and now it was installed. Then I wanna do package control install package and we'll look for TypeScript and I'm just gonna use that first one there. And I might have to actually close out the TypeScript file, and I do. So now I've got TypeScript code syntax stuff uh, inside of here. So, so that is something for Sublime Text. Of course, if you're using another text editor other than Sublime Text, and in this case we're using Sublime Text um, you know, version three, if you're using a different text editor, that's fine. It's not gonna be a whole lot different. Um, other than how maybe the, the, the actual text editor renders or checks the text that you end up doing. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and create a new document or a new page. And we're gonna go ahead and make it index.html. And I'm really just putting index.html, I'm just gonna add in this main.dst, right? So I just added some basic index stuff and I'm adding in that JavaScript there. Right? So I'm not adding in TypeScript, I'm using JavaScript because that's actually what you want. You want the compiled version that TypeScript comes from to make the JavaScript. And this becomes a lot more clear when we get a little bit more complicated than what we have so far. Um, so now that I've got that, I can actually run something called tsc watch. And what this does is it's watching for file changes. So if I said even more sweet, and save that, it actually compiles and does those changes as we go. 
um, we will definitely do this a lot more. So, so don't worry if this is like going maybe a little too fast for you or something like that. Um, don't worry about that at this point. But I will open up a, a new terminal window and I'll go into dev and I'll change into TS setup again. And remember how we installed HTTP server? This right here, we're actually gonna run that on our file. So we'll do HTTP server and it do dash C dash one. Um, what dash C dash one does means that it's, it's not caching the files. So when we make changes, changes don't get cached. So we can easily make changes. So now if I open up that the actual server that's being run, as it says, it's available on these two um, URLs and I open up the JavaScript console with command alt um, J or command option J, we see even more sweet here. Okay, so if I change this and I'll just say, yeah, sweet. Save that. Um, notice I actually saved it. I hit command S to save it. It made some changes for me. I go refresh in here. We see console log is working. Okay, so that is actually setting up the guide up into a point, right? Like there's definitely a lot more stuff to it than we have to do here, but this is the first part of the guide that's doing the setup. So I just wanna recap real quick as to what we did. First of all, we did the installations necessary, right? So we did that, that's not a big deal. And then we made a TS file. So in our case, we called it main.ts. And we just wrote some basic code here. We created something called a class and we used this syntax. Granted, we will do more of this, so don't worry if the syntax isn't making sense yet or even what let is doing and stuff like that. We'll definitely cover those things. After we made this main.ts, we made a TS config file. Now this file is important to kind of understand generally how it's gonna be compiled. So when we run TSC, this TS config goes off of this for com uh, like our compiler. The compiler meaning taking that TSC or TS file and then turning it into a JS file or a JavaScript file. And that JavaScript file is the file we can use on index.html. So we created a basic index file and we used the compiled JavaScript. That's what that main.ts file is. Of course, if we wanted to change where that output directory is, we could just say output or out um, and really simply save that. The compiling should actually detect what I just did by after saving it, and it did. It, it made another file, and if I said ABC and hit save or control S, it makes another one, right? So, so this actually is really cool for us, um, and then when we use that command TSC watch, it actually watches all of those changes. Very, very cool, very useful. Um, it's very useful, especially if you're like working from, let's say for instance, Python. Th this is similar if you were using Django when you do the run server. And when you make changes on any Python file and you refresh the page, it actually works. But in this case, it's, it's like taking one language to another. So it's actually doing a lot, of, a lot more work than just the standard Django run server, if, if that's what you're familiar with. But as you notice, we actually have two things running. So I have a server running, but I also have TypeScript watch running. So that's kind of the bigger thing there. So if you have any questions on the first portion of this setup, let us know. Um, of course, this guide right here is really gonna be covering it, but there's still a lot more things that we wanna do for TypeScript. I'm actually gonna do some more examples in the next one before we actually jump into Webpack. Classes are the building blocks of TypeScript. And what classes allow us to do is some really powerful and interesting things, right? So in this case, we didn't really see a whole lot, right? So if we look at main.js, it kind of renders out and it's, you know, it's, it's pure JavaScript and it looks fine, um, but it's not actually doing a whole lot, right? So let's, let's make it do some more things. So what happens is when you define a class, um, let's actually just start this one over. We'll define a class and we'll say sweet, sweet class or basil. Uh, let's just say sweet, sweet basil. And we're gonna go ahead and put these, these um, curly brackets after it, right? So this is the base of de designing the class. Then we do something called a constructor. So the constructor is 
Um, basically, what we want to have inside of this class or what we want this class to do when it's first created. Now, this constructor in the last one, we did console, we just did console.log and something. So that means that when this class is created, a new instance of this class, it just does something. Well, what if we wanted to change what that something is? We can come in here and just say, um, well, let's just call it name. And we actually declare the type that it is. So we all we use strings here, so lowercase string. And then inside of this console, we'll say hello. And then we'll just add that name. So that name is being passed in here. So now let's go ahead and call this. We'll just use let. So before we talk about let and var and all the, and how variables work and stuff like that, just bear with me until we do that. So I'll just say let basil equals to new. So new sweet sweet basil and parentheses. So this is what it was, right? Um, new is saying create a new instance of this class. Now, if you've worked with Python before, this is essentially what it looks like with the new instance of the class. In TypeScript and JavaScript, this is what it's gonna look like. So we go new and notice that, that I have an error here, right? It's saying supplied parameters do not match signature of the call. So if I actually come in here, um, it, notice it's giving me some, some autocomplete stuff here. And of course, that's because of the, the package that we have. But basically, I can add in a string here or I can say name and Justin or hello world, right? So we have that in here, but I actually don't have to pass in the named parameter itself. Instead, I just put that in and I've got name in there being world. Okay, so now if we look at the main.js, it should look different, but it doesn't because we have TSC not running. So again, when we need to compile things, we run TSC dash dash watch and hit enter and this will watch for the compiled changes. And then of course we need to run our server again. So HTTP dash server C dash one, so dash one, or excuse me, dash C dash one. That'll make sure that we're not caching anything or our server's not caching anything. Um, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and look at that server again. I'll just refresh in here. And in our console, we see it says, hello world. Um, if I do this a couple more times back in main.ts, I can say, hello basil for hello basil and then world for the first one we save that and we refresh in here and notice that it does it as is now something that you also notice is that we can't use the same variable multiple times that is i can't declare it multiple times again we'll come back to variables but basically you have to declare the variable to use it of course i could do something like this where i'm just redefining the variable. So if I refresh in here, it's still doing the same sort of thing. But when I use Bazel again, um, this would actually go off of this second version. Um, so to see that in action, let's actually add a method to this class. So methods are functions that work inside of a class, right? So functions that work inside of a class. So if I wanted to create a function in here, this is where I could do it. So we'll just say like, let's say, color okay so this is going to be the name of my method i'll use parentheses and curly brackets much like the constructor and then i'll just say console log green okay so um let's go ahead and just say basil dot color use the parentheses after it we save that a refresh on our page and we see green coming through now, why is it that we only see green once, but yet we see new basil, like basil coming through twice, right? So I'm actually calling new sweet basil twice. Well, I actually only call color one time, uh, obviously. So that's that's the big part of it. So if I did let world again, or let basil here, and then say let world, I could do world.color, and then it will actually run it twice. Okay, so cool start but let's actually take a look at main.js, right? So all of that JavaScript was now compiled into this. Um, Prototype.color equals to function. Um, so that is something that, you know, it's doing the same sort of thing, but it's just a lot more code. Um, granted, I actually have more lines of code in the TypeScript. So if I cut it down, it goes to, these are 12 lines here versus 13 lines 
what do you know? It's actually one extra line. Um, and that does make a difference long term, but the main thing here is how it's being compiled and how it's moving into things. All right, so that's some more stuff on classes. Um, and the next one, we're actually gonna talk about inheritance in classes and how that works. So now what I wanna talk about is inheritance, inheritance inside of a class. So a lot of times what you'll see is classes using other classes to make their classes more valuable. Um, so what that means is, let's say for instance, I wanna call this sweet, sweet basil and I have color here, but let's actually set up color. So I'll say color equals two and we'll add green, right? So we're adding a new thing in here, but we'll say string. And I'll just say, I'll declare a variable up here, color string. Um, now, we have some conflicts here. So I'll say get color versus color. And we'll just change that as our method. Um, notice that we're getting some more errors here. And I'm gonna add color for world, I'll say green. And for basil, I'll say like bright green. Okay, so we've got two colors, two different colors and two different ways of getting them. Notice I just changed this because color is gonna be a parameter um, of this class. So I'll show you what this means right now. So we'll just say color equals to color. So what's going on here? Um, I'll just say start color or basically initial color is equal to that. So that should clarify it a little bit, but it doesn't. So it should say this.color. So this is remaining to the actual class itself, and we're actually able to set color that way. So now if I do basil.color, um, it's actually gonna return that color. So I would actually have to console log that color. So we save that, and I refresh in here. Yep. It's not running, so make sure we run TSC watch. And of course, we wanna run our HTTP server as well. We run refresh and I see bright green coming through here. And that's because of that. Again, we can look at all this stuff and look at main.js and we see what has been compiled. Um, I'm gonna get rid of these other folders because we actually don't need them anymore. Those were just an example a little while ago. Uh, but main.ts is, is showing us a little bit more as to what sort of thing is kind of happening. It's not giving us a whole lot here, but it is working in, in, a, in a good sense. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and do some template inheritance. Um, and what I'm gonna do is come down here and I'll say class basil, and we'll say extends sweet, sweet basil, okay? So it's extending that class. So it's actually inheriting this class and, and just making a new class for us. And of course, I have to have a constructor because every class has to have an instructor, a constructor. And then in here, I just add this stuff in. Notice that I can't just leave an empty constructor here. I actually have to run the super class on this as well. So really simply, I just run super. Super, hmm, doesn't seem to be working. Now, the reason it's not working is because we actually are calling the super class. That means that we're calling sweet, sweet basil's constructor. So that means that I have to add in uh, a name in here of some sort of string, and then also a start color of some sort of start color. So that means that I should probably add name, string, and start color have a string here. So then that way I can actually run this constructor itself. So we'll do let basil three equal to new basil. And again, the same sort of constructor and I'll say basil. And then we come in here and our start color is gonna be bright green. Another way to spell bright. Okay, so this is basil and that's what it's doing. So if I did basil three dot get color, what do you think is gonna happen? I'm gonna go ahead and comment these out with command slash. Um, that will comment them out so we only have one running. But what should happen here? Well, if I go back into um, my actual server running, it runs green. 
And it also runs hello world, hello basil, and hello basil. Well, those other ones are running because of this. So let's go ahead and just comment those out. We save that, we refresh, and it says hello basil and green. Of course, it's saying hello basil because of the, the parent class that it's using. So it's extending this parent class and it's working. But I can also write another method in here. So let's say, for instance, set new color. And we'll just say color uh, is going to be passed in here. And I'll do a string. And we'll just say this.color equals to color. So this.color, as in the instance color, is equal to the past color. So again, new color, I could say it like this, just to make it even more clear. And now what I want to do is update my get color to being console log instead of just green, but this dot color. So again, it's referencing the class instance um, and it's unique to the actual instance, which is created here. So now what I want to do is say basil three and we'll do set new color and the new color will be red, okay? give us some space here and then we should all have get color run twice what do you think the first one's going to say and what's going to the second one going to say we refresh in here we've got bright green and then red so now let's bring back world and i'll try and run world.set new color of dark green notice the error Right, so that's because the basil class is inheriting everything from the sweet basil class, but the sweet basil class does not have anything from the basil class, and that's why we get this error. Okay, cool. So that's it for classes with inheritance. Um, of course, there's other kinds of methods that you can do here, and you also don't necessarily have to use the constructor to set things, right? So like, uh, well, in this case we have to because our, our parent class has it, but in other cases, so let's say for instance, I got rid of this, right? Um, then I would have to console or get rid of a few things here. But then in my super class, I would just call super and that calls the super class itself. But you can also do super dot uh, get color, right? Well, you in the constructor, you would do super class still, but let's say set new color, we would call super dot get color, which would console log whatever that color is. Um, right? So, so this should actually work just fine in many cases, right? But, but it's, I mean, there's, there's some other things that we'd actually want to add in here, which is, uh, we want to add name and start color. So I'll say name is a string, right? So notice the constructor. I don't have it in here anymore. So what I want to do now is I'm going to say this dot name equals to name and this dot color equals to start color. Okay, we'll save it. Notice there's no errors. What if I change this, the ordering of super call? There are errors. Okay, so I actually have to call super to be able to get these parameters and I need to do it beforehand. Now, of course, if the parameters were here and let's say string and I put this up one, it is running an error still because it's saying this, it's saying from the derived class. So I'll just say name this or name new. So this dot name new, it's still saying that I have to actually call the constructor. Um, so you, when you inherit, you always wanna call super and it's probably best to do it first. That's the point there. Okay, so now that we've got that, Let's do super dot color. Um, all of the other things should be working just fine. I'm gonna get, get rid of new name. So this definitely should work. We come back into Chrome and we've got all of this stuff coming. It's saying red uh, because we do the constructor of bright green. So get color is called first, right? But we're actually setting the color um, right here. And that's where it's setting the color first bright green and then red and red uh, and red and red is coming twice because we actually call get color when we set the new color uh, and then we also called get color so hopefully that's starting to make a lot more sense here notice that this is running an error now because we actually don't set anything so i go ahead and comment those two out as well 
refresh in here, it's working again. We look back at main.js, look at the code. I mean, if you wanna try and memorize this, go for it. Versus this, this is a lot more simple. Definitely a lot more achievable. Um, and that's, that's it for classes. If you have any questions on what we did here, um, let us know, otherwise let's keep going. So before we jump in to the next part, which is running and compiling with Webpack, um, we're actually gonna talk about let and var. Um, so I'm gonna actually delete everything in main.ts. Um, not to worry, we will have all of this stuff on github.com slash coding for entrepreneurs and also join cfe.com slash github. That is a redirect. So that's actually where these things will be. Um, so what I wanna talk about is that let stuff. So if I said let hello equals to hi, um, this is a variable. So if you're coming from, let's say Python, Normally in Python, you would just say something like this and that's it, right? And then you're done with it. Now, when it comes to JavaScript as well as TypeScript, you have to declare it first. So using let and var um, are two ways of declaring variables, right? So var is something that you'll see all the time in JavaScript. Let is TypeScript specific. Now, these two things are only subtly different, but very important in the semantics or the way it's actually written. So the syntax between the two are different. And if you wanna learn more about this, I do recommend that you take a look and read up on the actual documentation, which is right here. But I wanna show you some practical things about it here that are also in the documentation, but I'll explain the way I understand how it's working. So if we have these two variables, I can obviously change them to saying hello being ABC and then hi being, you know, whatever. Um, so this is how I change them, not a huge deal. But when, when we work in TypeScript, we can actually declare the type it is, right? So if I say string here and then try and say hello, you know, being an integer, um, this is now running an error, right? So it's not assignable to this type. So when we declare it, that's what happens. Now, if I get rid of that string, it's still saying it's not assignable to that type. But if I change declare it as any, then I can actually switch it back and forth, right? So this declaration is also something that's fairly important when it comes to defining things. So we've got any, we've got number, um, not integer necessarily. So notice that if I declare it as number here, I already got a, uh, an error there. I can declare it as string and any. Of course, there are others, but those are a few. And for our purposes, those are what we're gonna talk about here. Okay, so we declared them and we can also actually declare the data type that it's using. When I say any, that means that I can change it from uh, hello to, you know, from a string to a number. Now. If you come from Swift, it's different. Let in this case is different than what it is on Swift. This is how it works, just like what I said. Um, so let and var are the way you declare the variable in the first place. So if I try to say ABC equals to another here, uh, it's giving me an error, right? It can't find this name because I actually have to declare it first. So just keep that in mind that you have to declare let or var when you're using variables inside of TypeScript. Now, I would say, I would argue that you're gonna use let pretty much exclusively over var. There are some cases that you might wanna use var, and again, check out that documentation to see that, but I'm more concerned with why would I use let and where would I use let. So there is a little um, piece of code that is on that page there that we can write out. So I'm gonna write function to create a function and I'll call it F and I'll just do input. And in this case, I can say Boolean. So you can use Boolean or number. So let's go ahead and say number. So input Boolean, of course, is a true or false value, right? Uh, but I'm gonna say input equals to number, or rather, sorry, Boolean. I'll keep it as Boolean to stick with what's in the docs. And I'll say let A equals to 100. And then we'll say if input, so if true, basically, then we'll say let B equals to A plus, you know, whatever number. And then we'll just return B, okay? Um, otherwise, we'll return A, okay? So this is a valid function. This will actually work. So if I do F 
and I'll just say true, um, what I should see is what B is. So we'll just go ahead and console log that up. And then I'll do console um, log F and false. Okay. So I have two ways of console logging and we should be able to see what these things are. Uh, I am going to comment out these other ones. I, do, I don't actually need them, so I'll actually delete them. Um, but now we've got this function, right? So this is actually how you define a function as well. So it's func instead of def, like you might be familiar with. So it's func, actually write function out. It's not func, um, it's literally function. So that's how you write functions. It's, of course, it is different than writing the classes like we've seen before or the methods in a class than we've seen before. So if you just write this, also errors. You have to actually have a function. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and look at our server running. Uh, of course, I have to run TSC watch as well as the HTTP server to get used to that. Um, and I refresh in here and I see these two different numbers, right? So um, that is pretty cool. It's showing me B as the first one and then it's showing me A. But what if I change this to B? I save that. It gives me an error already, right? It can't find name B. But what if I change this variable to B? Ha ha, it's showing me this. So I refresh in here and it's now saying undefined, right? So this is where variables uh, using var and let make a huge difference. That's why you would always wanna use let here. B is not defined anywhere else in here. So we would not use it, we would use A. And that is where this error actually happens and that's a, a big part of the reason why you use let. But this is also true for classes as well. Um, so inside of classes, you can do uh, the same sort of thing uh, and using the same sort of method that uses let versus var. Now this is something you will use a lot in TypeScript. So don't worry too much if, it, if it's not sticking completely, but just keep in mind that you're gonna be using let to declare your variables the majority of the time. And if you want to understand uh, a little bit more about this, definitely check out that there, or let us know in the comments below so we can go into it more. Okay, so now that we've got some of the basics out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into actually implementing um, Webpack. Webpack's really cool, and we'll see why in just a moment. So now it's time to run and compile with Webpack. And what I wanna do is actually start to work my project as its own individual project. So. I did install all these things globally, so some of them I won't necessarily have to install again, um, but a lot of them I wanna have local. So uh, what, I, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna install Webpack without global. So let's go ahead and open up Terminal, and inside of my TS setup here, we'll do npm install and Webpack. And this is bringing it into my local project. So if I look in Sublime Text, once it's actually done, it brings the node modules in here. Um, so that's a, a way to kind of keep my package together. So if you've worked in a virtual environment, it's it's kind of doing something like that. Um, so I can also do TS loader. So npm install TS loader. I'm gonna leave the other ones for later and we'll go back down to run and compile Webpack. So now what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to just add this Webpack file. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and now in TS setup, I'm gonna to go to new file and we'll do webpack.config.js. I'm gonna paste that stuff in and we'll talk about this in just a moment. So um, one of the downsides to using the TSC watch is yes, it does compile things fine, but if I create a new file in here, let's call it second.ts and we'll do class and I'll do second dairy and I'll just add a constructor because that's what you do, parentheses, and we'll just say console, um, console log, hi. We'll save that, and with TSE config, if we go into dist, notice second.js is also there. Let's go ahead and delete this bundle, uh, but second.js is also there. That's not what we want. We actually want um, just one file, so that's where um, webpack.config.js is gonna handle it for us. So the first thing is we notice that it's taking in 
entry. So entry being what's the like point of entry for everything? What's going to be the main file essentially uh, to you know compile from? And that's where main.ts comes in. Now that will make a lot more sense once we link files, but for now main.ts is where we're going to. And then basically we're going to be using that ts loader like I said, and then we're going to use the file name of bundle.js and the output is going to be inside of our main directory here and then it's going to look for dist so this folder same spot as before so really same spot as ts config right so it's got that outdoor it's doing that same thing in webpack okay so let's go ahead and look at this we're first going to do the non-minified version so we'll close out tse config and we'll just do webpack.watch then i get this error okay so Notice that it says module build failed, could not load TypeScript, try installing with npm install TypeScript, or if it's global, then we can just link it. So it actually was global, right? So when we did the installation, we did this, right? So you can use the global version as it says with linking it. So if I just did close that out and do npm link TypeScript, let's make sure we spell that out type script, hit enter. Uh, it should link it now. So if I do webpack.watch, it is now working, okay? So we could have done npm link webpack as well, but I wanted to show you guys that error. So you, if you see it, um, that's what happens. Obviously it gives you, it's pretty verbose, so it does say what it is. Um, so that's pretty nice, but notice it did build it. So if we go back into our dist file, we see bundle is in here. Okay, so it has a lot of other code in here. It has Webpack in here with it. So that's where that other code is coming from. And then it has that initial function. So going back into our index file now, instead of using main, we're gonna use bundle.js and all of that should work fine. So let's go ahead and run that server again with HTTP server-c-1 and we refresh in here and everything's working as intended. Okay, so going back into our setup guide, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and we're now gonna make a new one, a new TypeScript file called git coffee. So I'm gonna close these down a little bit and I'm gonna make a new folder even. So I'll say new folder and I'll say coffee. This is not in the guide, so boom, boom, boom. Uh, actually, I'll rename this folder. Um, before I do coffee, I'm just gonna rename it to SRC. And then inside of here, I'll make a new folder called git or, or rather coffee.ts and oops, not sorry, the folder name should be coffee. And then inside of there, we're going to make a new file called git coffee.ts. Okay, so notice it has three folders in here. Uh, it's a little different than what we did here, but I'm going to go ahead and First off, make a class and I'll call the class must have coffee. And just like we've already seen before, we're gonna add a constructor in here and we'll do console log and make it bulletproof. Okay, so must have coffee, make it bulletproof. Now, how do I use this class inside of main.ts? What do I do? Well, there is a way to actually import things inside of um, t um, TypeScript. So you can actually do import and using these curly brackets from somewhere. So in our case is dot source slash coffee dash git coffee. And the class name, of course, is what we're actually wanting is must have copy coffee. So there we go. So I've imported it. Now, the problem here is I'm getting an error, of course. The problem here is my class, I didn't actually export it. So if you want to allow things to be imported, you have to export those things. It's just how it works in TypeScript. Once I do that, must have coffee is now a class I can work with. So I can say let coffee equals to new must have coffee. And then there we go. So I'm actually now working with this coffee itself I save it, uh, notice the module or webpack is still running. I go back into my project, I refresh in here, and boom, make it bulletproof. 
it's working just fine. So that is what Webpack has done. It's actually combined those two modules and made them into one. So if we look in bundle.js, uh, there it is. It's now just one file. And we can stay, take it one step further and make it one minified file. So if we wanted it to be minified, which if you're not familiar with minified, you'll see what it is in just a second. I hit watch, optimize, optimize, minimum. We now go back into bundle.js. This is a minified file. Uh, it's, it's fairly hard to read is the point, but it's minified. That means it's only on one line typically. And it's also um, going to get rid of all the extra spaces, which makes it just a little bit smaller of a file. As we see here, um, let's, let's actually try that again. Um, so I've got minified file. Let's just take a look at how, how big it is. It might not make a difference with this little amount of code, but we see here bundle.js is 791 bytes. So let's go ahead and just get rid of optimized minimum. Or right, now we go back into the finder window, 791 bytes still. Yeah, so it's not actually making a difference uh, right now, but the point is that uh, if you had a lot of code, it definitely would make a difference just slightly. But at the same time, even if it's not making that much of a difference in the file size, uh, it's a lot harder to read. So that there, therefore, if somebody grabs it, it's going to be a lot harder to read as well, depending on how you actually want your code to go about being hidden. Okay, so we basically just did all of these things right here. Um, I didn't really explain them in the documentation, but it is there, it's now working. So that is also how you import things. So you can actually use other classes with each other. So uh, in the next one, we're gonna just kind of extend our class knowledge just a little bit further. So if you have any questions on what we did here with Webpack, please let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going. Okay, so now it's time to put our source files or TypeScript files all in the source directory and then combine some of our classes and stuff like that. So main.ts, um, this is not really that functional. Um, so inside of SRC, I'm gonna make a, another new file um, and I'm gonna call this main.ts here instead. Um, and then I will go ahead and grab, well, let's see, I wanna just grab probably just the import and the function. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these bring them in here. Notice the import's a little off, so I need to get rid of SRC because it's now inside of SRC. So this is the new main.ts. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And I'm gonna make a new folder inside of here called archive, um, essentially so you guys can see some of the things that we've done. Um, it's not gonna have everything, but it will have a few of the files and it's probably useful for what you're doing too. So if we go into dev, ts setup, archive is gonna hold the uh, second.js or second.ts and main.ts and just opening the finder makes that a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to close out a few files here. Main.ts, I'm not going to save, um, webpack bundle second.ts, not going to save and close off a few others. Okay. So since we did this, we need to update webpack, meaning since we moved main.ts into src.ts, I'm gonna say the entry is src.main.ts and we'll see what happens. So uh, again, let's go ahead and compile with webpack watch. Again, we're not using TSC watch, we're using webpack watch and we're gonna optimize for minim minimize. So I get this error and well, it's not really showing me what's wrong, right? So if I go to this, I see that I've got include here, but I'm gonna add one more thing in this and just say, src slash or excuse me double quotes src star comma okay so this of course is in that ts config file um, so we still need that even though we're not using tsc where we still need this in there and include will just add src into there so now if i run it let's try it again uh, it should run just fine right and it does so now that that's there we can now do http server C and dash one, that should run our server just fine. We go back into Chrome, we refresh in here, um, everything's running, but if we look at main.ts, nothing's actually here, right? So we're not actually running anything off of this. So what I wanna do now is implement must have coffee to a class that I define inside of here. So I'll just say class, really coffee, 
and it extends must have coffee and constructor as we've seen before uh, in this case i'm just going to keep an empty constructor and then i'm going to cut out this function and add it in here okay so there we go now i have the constructor empty but i can't have it empty why is that because i need to call super um, as we've seen before and in this case must have coffee doesn't have anything in the constructor other than a console log. Okay, so I've got this F function in here now too. Um, so I can just say, let new coffee equals to, and again, new really coffee, and then new coffee dot F true. Okay, and then we can also say let um, old coffee equals to new must have coffee and that's that so I save it refresh in here of course there it is it's working um, of course I could change the things that we've already talked about so in my classes I could add some stuff and I could say type and I'll just give it a string um, type is probably not a variable you might not necessarily want to use so I'll just say coffee type and in my constructor, um, I might want to set it here, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'll just say set coffee type as a method with a name being a string. And in this case, I will not set a console log. I'll just say this dot coffee type equals to name. Okay, so we've got that. So in main.ts, new coffee, set coffee type, and we're gonna say the name is bullet proof. Okay, so I actually wanna override this set coffee type method. So that means I'm gonna set coffee type here. So set coffee type here. And I'm still gonna put the name in. So I'll put a name of string and I'll call super dot set coffee type with that same name, right? So it's calling that super call function. And this time I'm going to go console log and I'm going to say hello there plus let's put plus this dot coffee type. We save that refresh and there we go hello there bulletproof so this means i can override my classes here too right so overriding it meaning if i got rid of that it's going to say hello there undefined right so i actually don't have a coffee type of course i could set one i don't have to leave it empty so i could say coffee type equals to bulletproof Save that and there we go. So I actually set it here, which also overrides that default, right? Um, so there's a lot of different ways on how you could go about doing this. And that's where when we get into practical examples using Angular, which is definitely something we're gonna be doing, then TypeScript's gonna, gonna really start to shine using something like that. But in this case, we do see that, well, we can override methods from the classes that we're inheriting from and it's fairly simple to do. Um, I, I mean, I think it's more simple than Python in many cases. So if you were coming from a Python background, it'd be super, and then the name of this current class, so we'd say really coffee, and then self, and then we would have to run, uh, you know, set coffee type, and then put the name. Like, like I mean, this is, this is how it'd be done in Python. This is how it's done. And TypeScript, it's just it's just really, really clean. It's a nice language. Um, it's something that I really like about it. Okay, so now that we've got this, we've, we can start to use a little bit more of a practical example um, just using TypeScript. So in my case, I would rather use TypeScript with jQuery. So you might wanna use jQuery in your TypeScripts. And that's what I'm gonna do so I can, I can kind of manipulate 
um, my index file in a way that I'm very used to using, right? Now, using jQuery is not necessarily a good thing, but it's something that I'm used to using, so I might wanna use it inside of TypeScript, and this is how we're gonna do it in just a moment, or at least in the next video. If you have any questions on what we did here, let us know, otherwise, let's keep going. So before I jump into jQuery, I wanted to show you package.json. So package.json is a way of uh, kind of describing this entire um, app that we're building or the software that we're building. Um, in this case, I just have, notice I have TypeScript in here and all these dependencies, but the question is, how do you actually make this? So I'm gonna rename this as um, archive.json, just so we can remake it. So archive.json is this, and I'm gonna come back into my project, and I'll just do npm init. So what npm init does is it actually creates this package for me. So I can give it a name. So in this case, I called it CFE setup. I can give it a version. I'll just leave it as 1.0.0. I can give it a description. Uh, I can do the entry point. In my case, I'm gonna leave it as the default of Webpack. Um, so I don't have to divert too much because Webpack is actually where we want this thing to be entered because Webpack is the command that we call, right? So test command, what is that test command that we've been using? So I'm gonna go ahead and just run that test command of Webpack watch. This might be incorrect, but let's go ahead and try it. Of course, you can add a Git repository if you wanted, keywords if you wanted. So I'll just say learn Webpack and then maybe um, learn TypeScript and learn NPM, stuff like that. Author, my name, Justin Mitchell, license, MIT. And is this okay? Yes. I go back in. Uh, I see now that I have package in here. So notice the dependencies are there. The dependencies do show up. So what if I installed a new dependency? Well, we'll actually talk about that in the next one. Um, but now that I have this, what if I did npm run? And it says test is in here. So npm test, it actually runs the webpack for me. So it actually runs these things right here. So what if I did in here, I'll just call run and I'll do the exact same thing. We save it and let's close out that webpack and I'll do npm run. It doesn't actually do it. So we would do run run. NPM run itself probably has a few other things, but these are the scripts. So I can run watch or run um, uh, main, you know, anything that you would want to call it for your actual script. And that's what you would do. So we actually don't have a test itself, but this is a, a nice and easy way to run this in a different way. So if I just did another one called run server, let's put a comma here it would be that same server that we had before. So HTTP server dash C dash one, right? So we've got that now. So one of them is the webpack. So in here, I'm gonna just do npm run server and there we go. So it's running the server and it's running our webpack. Pretty cool, right? Of course, obviously this test, I'm gonna just leave it as an empty string for now because I, I don't actually have anything uh, as far as tests are concerned in here. So I'm gonna leave that out, but that's our package. Um, as we compare it to the archive, obviously I don't have a lot of things here and I could just probably just copy their no test package specified. Let's just copy that. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it for the package is concerned. So really anyone can download this and then do npm install and it will install the dependencies um, for this, right? Obviously there's more things that I can do to this package to make it more robust and better, but notice the keywords in here. Obviously I have a few of them repeating, so it's probably not something I didn't write the keywords correctly, so I don't actually need learn multiple times. There we go. Uh, maybe tutorial though, tutorial. Cool. All right, so that's npm init and package.json. If you have any questions on what we did here, let us know. Uh, otherwise, let's keep going. Now it's time to install jQuery using typings. So um, in the guide, it has typings going global, but we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're gonna do mptm install typings into our local project. 
So of course our local project is where, you know, all of our code has been so far. It's where we've been really working so far. Um, so as it's installing that, notice it did install it. If we look in package, um, I don't see any updates to my package, right? So it doesn't actually show that that is in there. Let's recircle back to that in a little bit, but let's go back into the guide. And we also wanna add in uh, typings install DT jQuery. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that as well. So we're grabbing typings to install it. So attempted to do it as an external model, but you need to enable global option to do it. So let's go ahead and just do dash G still not working. So let's bring typings back as a global module and we might have to sudo it in actually. So let's just sudo typings on this side. Okay, so as that's loading, um, I'm gonna go back and copy this with the global module installed. So the entire thing there, typings install DT global save, looks like it worked with just jQuery, and then we'll just run typings install. And there we go, so it actually installed the necessary typings and now we're gonna add in TS config. Um, if we look into our project, we see that there's typings in here now, globals, jQuery, and there's jQuery. Um, so back into our TS config, we will just add typings slash in here. So there we go. So we now have typings in there, and now we can use jQuery in our apps. So if we go into main, we'll do import. Well, let's actually take a look at this. We see import star as from jQuery. So I'm gonna copy that and we'll just bring that in. So we're importing everything as the dollar sign, like what jQuery does um, as jQuery. So we come back in here and now what I wanna do is just add something like set coffee type. We'll use dollar sign body and we'll do background color or sorry, not background color, but CSS background dash color and we'll use red. We save that, refresh in here. Up, oh, we don't have anything running, so let's do npm run webpack or run uh, main, and then npm run server. And I'm getting can't resolve jQuery in here. Okay, so that means that the jQuery model was not installed correctly, so let's go back in, and we will once again install jQuery with typings. And it's actually, it's possible that we didn't save this. So let's make sure we save that. That's saved. Okay, so that's not working correctly. So let's go back to the installs that we have up here. And instead of installing a jQuery globally, I'm gonna install it locally, or just we can do npm link jQuery. And let's try that again. Now it's working fine or it looks like it is, yep, it's working fine. I refresh in here and boom, there, it's red. Um, so we can actually use J jQuery now too. So I can also add, um, you know, body HTML and I'll do h1 uh, plus this dot coffee type or this dot coffee type plus the closing h1 tag, save that, refresh, and what do you know? Um, so jQuery is now working. So why is it that all of my dependencies aren't necessarily showing up here, right? So like typings and, and jQuery. Um, well, if I do npm install jQuery dash dash save, um, what that does is it installs it, but using dash dash save will add it here. So um, that's where you can just come back and basically reinstall them if you want or typings is another one we need to add. I think it was just typing, so let's look back. Um, so scrolling down, we've got typings, yep. Uh, and that should have added, and it did. So, so so that's where our dependencies actually come in. So, so this guide will most likely be updated to have dash dash save, um, just so we definitely have them on our JSON, uh, or excuse me, in our package.js. But that dash dash save is important for local development, right? So um, this, this local project is the important part for this. When you're using your um, just general projects, this is not gonna be the case. So that's where these being globally installed 
um, on your computer don't need don't don't just generate a package.json it's when you do it like we just did when you do that inside of a folder that has npm in it with that package.json that will actually add it in uh, for you so what if we did that let's go ahead and just go into a desktop and we'll just make a dir called delete and we'll cd into it and i'll just do npm install uh, typescript dash dash save press enter um, it installs typescript on there and if we open it up uh, there's no there's no like module or no actual um, package.json so like it says here so it's it's not going to add it to it and but it will still install it it's it just one other step that is something to note okay so that's it for installing jquery uh, i mean like if you know jquery then you can use it i don't think that long term you'll be using jquery a whole lot with typescript but i did want to show you that you absolutely can and should use ty um uh, jQuery if you're super familiar with it but now that you use it in TypeScript there's one other thing that I wanted to just add to this and that is making sure we have jQuery installed um, locally as well uh, but uh, the main thing here is that jQuery is something you're going to want to move away from eventually um, so when we actually compile jQuery into our code so if I run it run main and I look into bundle, uh, it is minified, but what you will see is, hey, look at here, um, jQuery.com is right there. So jQuery is actually minified inside of this. So you're not gonna link it elsewhere. So all of that stuff is in that one bundle.js, which is also really cool, but um, you wouldn't have jQuery also on here, which is true about Bootstrap. It's, it's true about a lot of other things is you wouldn't necessarily have those inside of that bundle.js uh, because of TypeScript being the way that it is. Now, typings, there are other things for it. So um, you do npm typings. You might find a lot of other packages for typings uh, itself. So if there are other things that might not be supported by npm itself, typings might actually have it. All right, well, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.